So from from what I can say is the president and the secretary at that point of Shaji and Kalyan, they were not meeting eye to eye on various aspects on how to run the AIFF. So that was primarily the problem. And at point of time, it looked like uh, the two parallel people are running the organization parallelly, which shouldn't happen. This is the most damning of, of allegations you can have because in AIFF's 87-year-old uh, his, year history, there has been no instance of anyone accusing the president's office or the president directly of taking money. Yeah. Never. Hello everyone, welcome back to Football Unplugged with me, Satvik. And yeah, when I started the channel, shuru kiya tha, you know, one thing that was one of the major focuses for me was the fact that I wanted to, you know, talk about the different jobs that are available, you know, in the sport in the country, right? And we talked about club owners, se baat kari hai, coaches, se baat kari, players, se baat kari hai. but today we are going to the different uh, spectrum of things, right? Or probably the different field altogether, nothing to you know, directly involved with the sport, but a very important, very pivotal part of how sports are run generally, right? So today I have with me Sayan Mukherjee, who works with the TV9 uh, news uh, news channel. And Sayan, how I came across Sayan is a very interesting story where, uh, you know, there was this entire news about Nilanjan Bhattacharji. And, you know, I was doing my research. I was looking for, you know, more and more news about that. And it was Sayan who was constantly, you know, uh, putting reports out, talking about the case, talking what was happening. So I just reached out to him and he was kind enough, humble enough to, you know, accept the invitation to talk. So Sayan, uh, not uh, taking too long. Thank you so much for accepting the in invitation and I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you for having me. It is always a good pleasure to speak about Indian football. Perfect. So Sayan, this is one question that I ask everyone that I interview, everyone that I talk to, right? So how did football start for you, right? So was it something that uh, did you sort of play? What was your first, you know, real involvement with the sport? See, I, being a Bengali born in Kolkata, so you, if you don't want or you want, you get used to it, firstly. Hmm. Then I have played school, full, school football, but yeah. after that, you tend to diff to education and and go for higher studies and all, but uh, I've always followed football. So, from from reading, writing, so it continued. And when uh, I was doing my uh, MA in journalism, uh, people told me that you you have a knack for writing, you should pursue that. And then I thought the easiest was to do is write on sports, which obviously you follow and you love. So that's how I got into journalism. So from there, it's going on for the last fifteen yeah. years. So could you tell tell me more about your journey, right? Uh, so what sort of education did you go through and how did you really land your first job in the sports, in the football industry? See, in journalism, you don't need any particular education as such. Anyone can do it. But ha, huh, you have if you go through certain courses or certain degrees, then it, it tends to get a bit easier. But it's okay. an on-hand job mm -hmm. or an on-field job. You have Correct. to write and edit and report and then only you get better at it and you understand how the things work. So okay. it's a hands-on job. You, you, A degree won't help you as a journalist, mm -hmm. but a hands-on job or an internship is the way to go. I did three months of internship prior to me joining as a professional okay. and uh, before, even before my part two MA examinations were over, I got my first job as a trainee at the Statesman newspaper in Kolkata. Okay. So in 2009, so that's how it began and, then, and that's how it's, it's going on. Wow. So Sain, uh, now that you've mentioned that, you know, you, you're from Bengal, you're from Kolkata, right? And you know, Jesse Kahaki, whether you want it or not, you just get involved with the sport because of the culture there, right? So right. I just want to understand because I have a lot of friends from, you know, Bengal, from Kolkata and, you know, football is such a major part of their lives, the rivalry between East Bengal and Mohan right. Bagan. So can you tell me more about what the culture is? How is it to live that life, right? Because we see a lot of English football, you know, where, you know, people just want 
to want the weekend to come then watch everton versus liverpool united versus it is a city rivalry right but indian football because it is not broadcasted as much obviously because you know east bengal and mohan bagan is the biggest thing in indian football but still right could you tell me as a fan as a journalist what is the entire how how festive is all of that see i will give you today's example today okay. mohan bagan is playing against punjab fc in delhi a, a very crucial isl encounter but uh, fans are not being allowed at the stadium it is being held uh, on, uh, on no, closed no. doors Correct. so all being most bengalis and most uh, uh, mohan bagan supporters in delhi they are clamoring for tickets and they are trying to know why they are not being allowed to enter because of security reasons and all right. uh, but uh, but the clamor is there they why won't we allowed to go and they are all very upset or dissatisfied by it by the development so this is an example of how things are so whoever you support mohan bagan is being or even mohan sporting so fans of those clubs or general public do keep an eye on the back page of a newspaper where most sports news are published and so they follow that sport and they follow their club and they generally know what is happening what needs to be done to win the tournament or what needs to be done to enter into the top 6 and what is going on in the club which is bad which is good which player is good which player is bad what is the coach doing all these sort of discussions you as a as a fan as a supporter you do and you think you know better than the than the coach correct so, like that, that, that those are all facts you know you should have played this player you should have played right, that player right player. right yeah. so that's those, those things happen and the unique thing about kolkata is uh, it is similar to most big football cultures in the world is if you do well supporters will treat you as your as your god but if you fail no matter who you are they will treat you as your doormat and that is the pressure as a player as a coach you have to live with it you have to live with so it. that is the thing so you know now this is something very interesting that you mentioned you know one day you're god one day you're a doormat right you know that is how yeah. a, a player switches from one match to another right have you seen something happen with a particular player right is there any incident that you can probably recall where one player was the cult hero for the club and then suddenly you know became the villain for the club have you seen can many you some many example? examples many examples one that instantly comes to my mind is uh, tolge osbe the australian striker correct he was a huge hit in i think it was around 2009 10 11 12 that four five period four five year period when he was prolific for east bengal he came to east bengal first he came to india for east bengal and he was prolific for east bengal but then uh, he switched over to mohan bagan and uh, hell broke loose right from stories from uh, forged signatures to Ill- illegal signing to unethicalness to everything came back, came into the scene it was widely uh, written in in the in the local press as well as in the national media i believe and uh, so it was it was very similar to luis figo going from barcelona to real madrid very similar the response so these things have happened these things go on so whoever what, goes fr- from one club to the other you generally don't hear nice words correct so you know when you talk about luis figo from barca to real madrid one incident that every can been can probably recall is the pig head incident right where the fans right. were extreme right like right. can you remember any particular fan instances where probably you know because it is so personal for fans as well right uh, this, now you you mentioned more about the media and where a lot was talked about for signatures etc was there any reaction from the fans as well yes yes east bengal fans didn't like it at all they said hmm. uh, he was a traitor yeah. he was a traitor so they, those things happen and east bengal mohan bagan fans rejoiced say we have landed your biggest player so what will you Correct. do now this Correct. is a, these things go on these things go on sir yeah so you know i think a lot of people in the country you know when we are talking about kolkata and the kolkata derby in particular right don't really know what separates the fan base of mohan bagan versus the fan base of east bengal right is there something particular that separates is there part of the city or what separates or is there something that happens naturally or is there a 
particular reason why some group chooses mohan bagan and the other one chooses east bengal no see firstly it comes from the background and lineage you have if you are okay. if you are uh, from present day bangladesh or uh, east bengal as it was called then then you are generally an east bengal supporter okay but uh, but if you are from the from the traditional bengal region which is now west bengal correct uh, then you are uh, a mohan bagan supporter that is generally the case but uh, it also depends on upon influence suppose you mix in a in a group that has more, more that has more mohan bagan supporters or you live in a in an area which has more mohan bagan supporters so you generally tend to shift to that way uh but i have i know many people who are of east bengal origin but are mohan bagan supporters and vice versa okay. so oh. so so there is no logic or reason to it but the thing is primarily it it comes from your lineage from which part of the of of bengal you are and then you evolve basically can i put you in a spot here what Which yeah. team I support? Yes, which team do you support my, out of the two? My my family is uh, green and maroon through and through, so I oh, didn't wow. have much choice. Yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect. And now that uh, then uh, there's a possibility of a third Kolkata team coming to the Indian Super League, right? Right. How does that make you feel? How does that change things in Kolkata? Probably. See, it's a, it's a it's a great occasion, and I think. Uh, indian football should celebrate it because because these three clubs are the biggest clubs in india in any which way you look at it okay correct support wise culture wise history tradition wise everything the pull they have the the way they are covered in the general gen, mainstream media everything correct so this this is an occasion occasion that should be celebrated and it should be covered widely i hope uh, today itself mohammedan clinches that one point they need and uh, they enter they are eagerly i from what i know and from what i have spoken to the officials and players they are very keen they are very eager because uh, mohammedan has gone through a rough spot for the last 20 30 years not much success uh, so they are very eager to enter the icl the top flight of indian football and really make a mark there and because because i feel they belong there because of the history because of the tradition and uh, because of how big a stature that the club are more than 120 years close to 130 years so hmm. okay okay understood okay perfect now now that we're talking about an i league club going to isl as well right and you having been part of the industry for like the best part of 10 15 years right now isl is or was supposed to be the change maker of indian football right uh, mm-hmm. the thing that will revolutionize indian football right as mm-hmm. someone who's been part of the culture through and through watching multiple divisions right whether when i league was there whether now with the indian super league what is number one what is your perception of the indian super league and number two do you think it has fulfilled what it set out to do initially see each and everything has its pros and cons ISL also has or have have it the good thing about ISL is the influx of some good quality foreigners some good quality coaches with good backgrounds the infrastructure away from the field i mean hotels lodgings food uh, nutrition diet these things have improved definitely these these have helped the players but technically and tactically i'm talking only about indian players here Uh, i don't see much involvement or evolvement or much evolution because uh, when these players play for the national team their performance everyone knows what is happening so which which shows that we are not which we haven't progressed the way we should have even after huge amounts of money coming into the sport from corporate sector but uh, that the technical and tactical aspect that on pitch thing that hasn't quite developed the way it should have been so sain i think something that is also talked a lot about and i think one of the major reasons of probably indian players 
not doing very well for the national team, right? I think is key positions being taken up by foreigners in almost every team, and probably no replacement for Sunil Chetri for the last ten odd years, right? So. How do you think, right, from a journalist perspective, right, who probably sees at the things at the grassroots level as well? How do we change that, right? Because FSDL, who probably is a who is a business, right? They want to earn money out of all of this eventually, right? They would want foreigners to come in. The teams would want foreigners to come in. The teams would want results, right? But ultimately, and this is my personal opinion as well. With Indian players not playing at the centre back, not playing at the number ten, not playing at the number nine, right? This does not help Indian football as well, right? At all, right? So, what is your opinion on all, all of this? See, right from the National Football League days, 1995, 1996, hmm. foreigners are regularly playing in the top flight of Indian football. Correct. Uh, but and this is a phenomenon that is happening everywhere around the world. So you look at La Liga, you look at Serie A, you look at Bundesliga, you look at English Premier League, any top league, players, best players affordable are playing there, right? We just speak of, of the country they are. But you have to find a way to still, still ensure that you have proper strikers and defenders and midfielders. That Now, how you can do that? One aspect is you reduce the number of foreigners. Now we have four uh, in the playing eleven. You can you can make it to three, right? For example, uh, because we because earlier also we had three foreigners, two foreigners. Then it was increased to six, eight. Then decreased to four. Now AFC has again increased that how many foreigners you want to have in the playing eleven. You can play. So so one is that then you can decrease the number of foreigners, and the other is you you. Make a rule that if you are playing four four two, one of your strikers should be Indian. But which which is not feasible in club yeah, football. Man. You cannot you cannot do that. Correct. But I feel I feel uh, from my experience that whatever chance you get as an as an attacking player, you have to make it count. You have to score goals. Simple as that. If you start scoring goals, you will have the confidence to play as a striker, as an attacking midfielder, as a playmaker. Similarly, with, with the defenders, if you don't concede goals, automatically your confidence will increase as a unit, as an individual. Now, in the AFC Asian Cup, our defensive performance was not that bad. Correct. If you, if you look, at, look at the if you look at the Australian match, if you if you look at the Syria match as well, yeah, we should have probably I think a lot of a lot of those were should, you know mistakes. I think one was good pre mistake. Yeah, mistake yeah. mistakes. The, if you consistently are under pressure to defend, mistakes one point of time will happen in a 90-minute right. game. So right. that is that is that is bound to happen. But the thing is, you have to ensure that you are not under pressure constantly. You have to keep hold of the ball, play, distribute among themselves, stretch the field, then bring your attacking players into the play so that they can make a mark in the opposition penalty box, which we couldn't do in the AFC Asian Cup at all. In 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 over 300 minutes of action in three matches, uh, we had only five shots on target, uh, of which one came off the bar. So, so realistically, and, we had only even, one chance. Even the matches of Afghanistan, we've not scored from an open play in like what seven right, odd matches. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so that so that is the thing. Our uh, players, particularly playing for the national team, I believe they lack some confidence about how to open up opposition defense and capitalize on that and score goals and that comes from when you are playing good on the uh, good for your club as well that translates into the national team and the other thing is you have to have a proper plan on how you can uh, create an opening which i from india's play national teams play which is not quite clear the way they attack it's not quite clear what is their plan how to you know create an impact in the opposition okay. defense that that is the that is the problem i see and you know someone like a sahal in the midfield who sort of transitions right who's good on the ball you know india doesn't have an alternative to someone like him right who probably you know dribbles past players who's good on the ball carries the ball forward progresses there right yeah so, so no, you see yeah. sahal is a very good player technically very gifted and it's great to watch him play as as a viewer but the okay. thing is uh, he got injured in these two important matches, couldn't play a part at all. 
now he is not playing part in mohan bagan's matches as well he missed the chennai match i think he is missing today's match so that is a problem when you, you when you are in and out of of matches because of injuries uh, that you you lose that rhythm once you lose that rhythm then it is very difficult to get back and contribute meaning meaningfully for any team that you are playing okay so sign okay. i i want to probably divert from talking particularly about football to now talking more about you and the profession right can you tell what capacity are you working in today and what does a normal working day look like to you see i am the chief subreddit of uh, tv9 networks english uh, digital platform news9live.com i have been there for i have been here for the last uh, nearly 3 years now okay. and uh, Nine hour shifts, five days a week. So you do it. Yeah. Whatever and is required, and what do. exactly does work look like for you? If I if I can ask that. See that 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 depends on the kind of uh, on the kind of sporting activities you have for the day. Okay. So basically now IPL is going on, so a lot of focus is on IPL. Okay. I follow Indian football closely. At least I try to follow. so mm. whatever news emerges out of it i if it's news worthy and if i have got some credible information i do try to write a copy on it so that is how it flows that is how it flows uh, so sign so, you've been in the industry for the last 10 15 years right you must have encountered multiple stories multiple scandals you know multiple issues what is the biggest story that you've broken in your career or what is the biggest story that you've discovered in your career in see, football if you talk see that has got to do with aiff the okay. the aiff elections the last time it happened in 2022 most of the election stories i did uh, okay. including including uh, india getting banned hmm. uh, that story i was actually it's a funny story because i was in us at that point of time i went for a vacation and uh, the the intimation came that fifa has banned india and i was uh, sightseeing in front of the brooklyn bridge and i sat in a corner wrote the story in 15 20 minutes whatever is required it was it was 6 a or 4 am in the morning in, in india time i still okay uh, so i mailed it to my boss and our desk and i wrote it sergeant whoever comes in the morning first time in the morning 6 am our shift starts generally so whoever okay. comes in at 6 am should publish the story asap and then take it from there hmm. so the so and my wife was are what are you doing you are on vacation and i said listen india has gone pan wait give me 15 20 minutes let me just do the story and then so and because and i was covering that uh, entire episode correct uh, very 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 Uh, sincerely so and i knew what i knew that fifa could ban india but that day itself it's getting banned obviously i didn't know it comes from fifa so so you know, i had to act fast so i think we were the first to i mean go live with that story and then people obviously came to know so so if if it is okay for you could you explain what exactly happened in entire elections fiasco See the problem was the elections weren't held on time. The elections were delayed. And this so, was the Prafull Patel regime, right? Prafull Patel here. Prafull Patel overstayed his tenure. Correct. Correct. Now, according to him and his camp, that he didn't do anything illegal. It was the matter was subjudis in the Supreme Court. Okay. The Supreme Court didn't give a verdict, which is why he stayed or overstayed. Hmm. and people against him the camp against him said that he deliberately stalled the proceedings just to get time just to be in power so this was the premise and then uh, when supreme court heard the matter they said no elections should be held you formulate a um, uh, constitution according to which voting would be held now formulating a constitution takes a lot of time so and india had a under 17 Uh, women's world, world cup. cup to host so fifa came fifa officials came to delhi at the football house their kfs headquarters spoke to all the stakeholders involved and then okay. then decided no if we don't ban india the situation won't be solved quickly and then either we have to 
shift uh, the World Cup from India, or mm -hmm. if India has to host it, they have to have elections and uh, and a uh, new independent panel should be in charge when India is hosting the World Cup, not the committee of administrators that the Supreme Court appointed, a three-member committee of administrators that the Supreme Court appointed. Uh, FIFA doesn't uh, entertain third-party influence. That's what they Correct. call it. So Correct. that for the interference. So that is why they said that you do elections quickly now that we have banned and then take it from there. Otherwise, we're shifting the World Cup. So then Supreme Court came into action. They formulated an interim body and now elections were held. Kalyan Chobe defeated uh, Bai Chung Bhutia, 33-1, came into power and then a panel was formed. So this is how it was formed in September 2022. Uh, the World Cup was in October, from October 2022. So, not much time was left. So, the, the tournament went on smoothly. Not much glitch or have problems happened. But uh, it, was a, it was a nice uh, experience because it was the first time FIFA banned AIFF for, hmm. for external activities. Hmm. So, this has never happened in Indian football. So, it was new to every one of, one of, one of us. Correct. Uh, Sen, now that you, you know, you mentioning that a lot of your, you know, important stories or groundbreaking stories have come at the expense of the AFF, right? Now, there are two particular incidents that I want to probably inquire, want to talk about in particular. One was the entire Nilanjan Bhattacharya story. But before that, um, I had an opportunity to have a word or, you know, interview Shaji Prabhakaran as well, the former general secretary of the AFF, right? Mm -hmm. And there is another story behind it where he was, you know, uh, he's still on paper. The matter is still with the Supreme Court. He's on paper, still the general secretary, but he was terminated from his position or at least asked to, you know, uh, not play as an active part of the member. So do you have any background? What exactly happened in that particular story? Your perspective See, on all of that? The, the matter is still subject is in the Delhi High Court. Yeah. But, uh, but as per Delhi High Court's directive, AIFF called an emergency uh, the, uh, uh, an executive committee meeting and ratified the decision of removing Shaji Prabhakaran. So, so he is technically not the general secretary anymore. But it depends on the on on the court. What court says at the end of the day? If court says that still it was illegal, then you know things can change. But at present, as things stand, he is no more the general secretary of AFF. And uh, see. Uh, a lot of complex issues is at play here. It's not that simple to even tell or divulge because from, from what I can say is the president and the secretary at that point of Shaji and Kalyan, they were not meeting eye to eye on various aspects on how to run the AIFF. So that was primarily the problem. And at point of time, it looked like uh, the two parallel people are running the organization parallelly, which shouldn't happen. And okay. then, uh, and then, uh, over issues, over many issues, they had disagreements. And when, when the president thought it was time that he should be removed, he took his executive committee members into confidence, and then called an emergency executive committee meeting. And before that, two days prior to that, he removed him. Uh, the president, the secretary, and the vice president signed on the letter. Uh, it was on November 7th, 2023, if I'm not mistaken. And the ex emergency executive committee was on November 9th. Mm -hmm. And then Shaji went to Delhi court. He filed a lawsuit that he was illegally terminated. The Supreme Court, uh, the, the high court initially stayed the order, stayed the sacking, and then said that you have to go do it properly call an emergency committee meeting and then get it approved, not the other way around. Hmm. And then AIFF had to call an emergency meeting and then they had to do it. So that, that is the story behind it. Understood. Right. Now coming into, you know, the probably news of Indian football over the last month, month and a half, right, with the entire Nilanjan Bhattacharya case happening and uh, you and your team, you know, breaking all the reports and all of that and that is why how i also got to encounter you as well right so uh in all honesty with as uh ron as as possible for you obviously you know there are things there are sources at uh, stake here as well and i wouldn't want to go into that but your perspective your opinion your individual opinion 
on the entire scenario of Niranjan Bhattacharya allegation, allegating uh, Kalyan Chowk. See, there are multiple allegations, hmm. but the most damning of it, from my point of view, is an AIFF employee uh, saying that or refusing to pay kickbacks to the president's office, and this he has written in his letter, hmm. uh, which which story I did. Uh, in his first letter to the president's office, Nilanjan Bhattacharya said that I refuse to pay uh, a part of my retainership to your office mm. because I have not been paid salaries for the last two, three months. So this Correct. is the most damning of, of allegations you can have because in AIFF's 87-year uh, his, old history, there has been no instance of anyone accusing the president's office or the president directly of taking money. Mm. Yeah. Never. So this is the biggest part and allegations of using uh, misusing AFF funds and uh, unethical practices, corruption. That is that is that is that can happen. That has happened in many uh, sporting federations previously. of India yeah. previously. Yeah. So that can happen and that has happened also. And in this case, that is no different. But the, but this uh, taking money part. Or, or taking a part of retainership fee from an employee, this has never been done or never been alleged by anyone. So, which I think is a huge, huge statement. And mm. if it is proved that it is so, then it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge slap on the face of the of the people concerned. And uh, what side of the story are you more inclined towards? Like, who do you think? Like, obviously, it's a difficult question and putting you on a spot here, but. Is there a more? Is there any inclination towards a particular party? See, I see, see. I go by evidence. If if someone is writing a letter from his or her personal ID or his official ID, hmm. then it becomes official and then it becomes news. Correct. If you are if you are just saying, then it is hearsay. Correct. Then it is hearsay. But if you are writing it on a letter, you are putting your words on a letter and sending it to the president's office then it is serious. And that is exactly what has happened here. Hmm. Even Nilanjan Bhattacharya has written to the PM's office, Correct. the Home Minister's the office, sports. the Sports Minister's office. And so so, so when he is when he's writing official letters, then it is official. Then it is there is nothing hearsay about it. Right. Hmm. So and I now, always try to go by evidence. As simple as that. Now when there is a ruling party MP at the position, right? And with the general ele elections coming in, right? The story got its heat. The story got fired for like 15, 20 days, especially in terms of just garnering people's attention, right? And to probably now slightly fading away, if I can say that, right? Uh, do you think, uh, do you think we would come to a conclusion to this? Or would this be something like a lot of cases in the country that just keeps on getting dragged on, dragged on and on? And probably there are 20 other tenures at end and, and that is when the decision comes. No, see, uh, two things can give us a, a, a result or a verdict. One is Supreme okay. Court speaking about it the, in the last hearing, uh, I think on late march i'm not i'm forgetting the day, exact date uh, mm -hmm. so the supreme court said that we are looking into the corruption allegations as well and mm -hmm. the formulating of the draft constitution and possibly mm -hmm. fresh elections so if mm -hmm. that happens supreme court takes it seriously and hears about it and delivers a verdict then it becomes serious then things would change mm -hmm. and and if afc or fifa intervenes and looks into these corruption allegations, then things can change. AFC has already uh, wrote a letter. Initiated a letter. Yeah. Initiated yeah. letter and Nilanjan Bhattacharya has replied to the letter, I believe, and he has submitted whatever evidence he thinks is evidence of mm -hmm. wrongdoing. He has uh, submitted it to the, AIF, uh, to the AFC. Now, AFC will take its own course. They, they have a stringent policy. They have a committee. They will look into it. They will take some time, two, three months at least, I, I believe. So that's how it goes. Uh, uh, and now, but but the thing is, uh, it is more easier for the Supreme Court now to deliver a verdict because yesterday there was supposed to be a hearing, which it didn't happen. It was, the case wasn't listed. 
but the case will be listed soon and it will be heard again that is that from what from what i understand it will be heard again soon very soon so in the the the, the, the fat part for us as football fans in all of this right is for a long time we've been complaining that there is uh, no footballer is at the helm of you know the federation right uh, no one from the sport politicians are running it necessarily right and when kalyan chobi was unanimously elected right 33 to 1 against the sporting legend of bhai bhai jumboti as well right there was hope there was this you know ray of hope that things will get better right now from someone who's closely encountered seen worked with in different capacities with the two different aiff regimes right has there been a positive change and where are you on kalyan chobi's term and prakul patel's term in between because prakul patel also you know faced a lot of backlash especially at the latter part of his regime right so where are you on both of them see this kalyan chobi regime the good thing is uh, you development programs are happening okay from some sub junior to junior to under 20 to under 20 these things are happening uh, women's league indian women's league to the second division home and away basis these things are happening which is obviously good because we speak about grassroots and how india should focus on grassroots and all so this this is part of the grassroots level right hmm. so this hmm. is a good thing but the but the problem is there are rampant allegations of corruption and wrongdoing at the top hmm. at the very top hmm. so okay. if that happens then it is very difficult to control because after a point of time uh people do get a negative vibe out of it because because grassroots is not something which is extensively covered anywhere right Correct. absolutely but yeah. but but the top level at the isl at the national team at the aiff level it it gets covered in, intensively if there is wrong doing there and if there is a negative news every week or say every month or every day then it creates a very negative impact overall Correct. that 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 is the, that is the thing and uh, and uh, national team's performance matters a lot no matter who wins isl or i league end of the day it doesn't matter much but who but if the national team does well goes into the third round of uh, fifa world cup qualifiers enters the second round of afc asian cup then it creates a positive impact which unfortunately is not happening so that is where that is where the big problem lies for indian football the national team has to play well has to deliver results consistently for 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 the normal people to get hooked to the for, hooked to the national team and indian football okay two thing that you mentioned and two thing that i'd love to talk more about right uh, one the national team to the grassroots right talking about the national team first again the national team head coach has been in the news has been outspoken has given deadlines right and i think this is for the first time uh, an indian football coach has interacted so much or you know probably put his heart out a lot especially when it comes to representation on media right obviously with the advent of social media this becomes more woe right but seeking constant time was probably at the opposite spectrum of things as compared to an igor steam match right but I, I was an avid supporter. I liked what C match was doing with the team, right? But what we saw in the AFC Cup again, I thought that was a one-off, you know, probably a one-off tournament. But the games against Afghanistan, I think, is the worst I've seen the team play under C match, right? So, where are you on C match, right? I what side of the you know support are you in? Because you follow things very closely. You know what happens, you know, at the national team level, not at the you know. AIFS level. So, where are you on the on the entire steam match in steam match out debate? See, see, steam match came in with a big reputation as a player, right? Yeah. So, his reputation as a player precedes his reputation as a coach, correct? Uh, which, which is not ideal, if you hmm. ask me, hmm. but it's okay. It's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He commands that respect as a player, and he should. But the problem is. Uh, our performance hasn't improved and in fact it has grown gone down gradually if you see his four year ten year now yeah. and from what i know he constantly wants longer camps and longer time with yeah. players yeah now 
during the off season during june july it is easy to do that no problem because it's the off season you can you can conduct a three year week camp or a four week camp i believe he will conduct a three week camp this uh, before this the june qualifiers yeah. yeah kuwait and uh, kuwait and qatar he will conduct a three week camp uh, efforts are in place uh, but that is because of the pre season during season it's very difficult to get you three weeks four weeks he right. he wanted he even he wanted four weeks before the afc asian cup in january he mm. got barely 10 12 days correct so and he says that because players uh, players uh, are injured when they come into the camp uh, they suffer lo- loss of form they are underconfident it takes time to uh, to fix all these things and then prepare the team and then play accordingly uh but this is a this is a problem any coach faces in in club versus country and uh, any national team coach faces so this is nothing new but and saying only national camps should be the way forward isn't the ideal way to do about it it gives a very mm-hmm. negative feeling to the players as well mindset uh psychologically even if not directly indirectly mm-hmm. one and secondly even stimash knows that he is not going to get a four week camp be- during the club season it's yeah, very difficult club season yeah. yeah yeah so so he has to find a find ways to you know work around it find a sweet spot around this find a sweet spot around it which i don't think he has quite managed that and uh, what has he, what has he done is he has consistently shifted goal posts uh, first it was the november qualifiers then it was the afc asian cup then it is the june march qualifiers then it is the june qualifiers so that that is isn't helping the team and the players i believe because it get, it 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 gives a very negative impact chalo ye match har gaya okay the next match is there the next match is there that is not how it should be each match each world cup qualifier is like a final for india because india is mm-hmm. india is is desperately trying to be the second team and qualify for the third round and it's yeah. not easy obviously yeah. performance suggests it's not easy so that is the way to do it and he has to uh, another problem that india team facing is he has to take bold and harsh decisions regarding player selections and uh, first eleven selections which which is which is not happening which is not happening which is not happening that should happen uh, but uh, but the thing is uh, now we are at at a situation where too much chopping and changing even too much chopping and changing won't help because we have only two matches to Correct. either qualify for the third round or 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 or, or not qualify wow. so yeah. so after four years of working with this set of players suddenly you bring in new players and you expect them to de- deliver goals and block attempts that 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 is unlikely to happen football doesn't work like that so and from what i understand he isn't going to make too many changes in the june squad correct uh, yeah. but uh, but if india qualifies and he remains in the his job uh, he remains the head coach because if india qualifies then automatically a two year clause triggers Correct. and if he remains in, in in his job then he is expected to make changes he is expected right. to make changes uh, from what i understand so and where are you on the debate where you know national coach team uh, sorry national team coaches should be an indian coach right now obviously there's a dearth of coaches in the country there's a dearth of good coaches and probably he just uh, khalid jamil is one name that probably pops out right as a as probably the only replacement for, or at the national team right uh, do you think it's time for india to test an indian coach at the top level or do you still think you know now with the current state no indian sort of qualifies for that role see see if you if you if you look at the history of national team coaches in india and abroad as well most of the success has been given by national team coaches worldwide right. if you look at it correct correct right uh, so that way india needs an indian national team coach an indian national team coach correct. a son of the soil so to speak and whatever india in international football whatever success india has got over the years it was all all delivered by indian coaches very few we have only won a few saf tournaments with foreign coaches in the last 20 30 years no tournament of note has won has been won by india with foreign team coaches so that is that aspect 
now do we have got uh, do we have got uh, credible indian coaches i believe two or three people are there who are credible uh, one was uh, uh, the dempo coach uh, 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 alberto colasso armando colasso sorry armando colasso the five titles with dempo five i league titles with dempo the best team in the club the best team in the country at that point of time uh, he took over as a national team coach temporarily he demanded a two year or three year contract which aiff didn't quite fancy yeah. so he left it was around 2012 2013 i believe so yeah. that was a missed opportunity because the entire team at one at that point of time was from dempo most of the players were from dempo yeah. so yeah. they had a natural understanding Hmm. and another missed opportunity was uh, sanjay shen because sanjay shen won hmm. the i league with uh, after uh, after i think eight uh, i think uh, 14 years or 15 years uh, with after 14 or 15 years mom mon mon won i league with sanjay shen hmm. and then he won the federation cup before that he had won the ifa shield with uh, uh, mohammadan in 2030 hmm. uh, so so he has had success at the top level with big clubs but there is huge pressure but mm. unfortunately he did he he was also involved with the indian arrows project at the junior okay. level he worked yeah. under joseph com toll the mm. uh, the un, 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 under age coach of the national team yeah. Yeah. so he was involved with the with the with that squad so he had a good chance of replicating that success if he had been the national team coach the senior national team coach but it yeah. didn't happen so mm. that i also believe was a missed opportunity india got back stephen constantine again mm. for the yeah. second yeah. for the second time yeah. he was there yeah. for from yeah he was there from 2015 to 2019 four years 19. so 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 that was again i believe a missed opportunity but from mm. what i understand now india but the aff is not mm. looking at hiring a an oh, indian oh. Uh, coach for the national team for the senior national i don't think so i don't think it's happening but but it depends on a lot of factors actually but it depends 100% yeah so talking about the profession in particular and and i think that is one thing that we've not really talked a lot about right so how do you think in terms of this journalism in the sport has evolved you know with the social media coming into the picture because earlier it was just traditional reporting right now everyone is a news reporter everyone is a you know a journalist per se right so uh, where are you on this entire thing of you know sam can you hear me yeah i can i yeah. can hear you i can hear you perfect so yeah where are you on this entire you know how how do you, how do you think has the industry evolved and how has it effect affected the you know broadcast uh, the you know reporting bit both positively and negatively see social media plays a huge role now no doubt about it and uh, uh, whatever stories most of the transfer news that you get and all they they go through social media first but uh, but uh, but major stories or bigger stories the impact that it has it still the print media still has got some kind of hold and credibility on it uh, but obviously people are there who write uh, in the digital sphere who do good stories that are widely read that are widely circulated on social media so mm. so both are good i'm not i'm not against anything but the only thing is i believe in case of social media a lot of uh, lot of rumors are circulated without credible evidence or without mm. verification of that news that should mm. be kept in check that should mm. be first the news should be first verified and then propagated on social media channels otherwise it's okay it's okay it's a competitive field it has always been a competitive field when uh, newspapers were there reporters used to fight for stories to break the broke the break the stories and there was different media houses they were considered rivals so mm-hmm. i know stories of that and now it is become even more competitive because social media is there people who are close to a certain uh, people who are close to team owners or ceos of players. players yeah they get news so that is fine that is fine that is okay and just in terms of the financial side of the industry as well right and uh, just i just want to understand this a ballpark range right 
even when it comes to probably you working as an editor or someone probably if, if you're aware in the broadcasting side of the things as well right what does a probably entry or a early level editor earns or similarly what uh, is there money in the industry if just put out no 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 see see uh, the salary structure depends on company to company okay that that is very difficult to say firstly okay. and secondly uh, money in the media industry is less compared to other industries say com- i'm giving an example so compared to the it industry we are very poorly paid that is that okay. is a, that is that is a fact that is a okay. fact that is true but mm. uh, this in the, the journalism industry is is different is different in the sense it is not only driven by money that much we most of the journalists they don't work only for money there is a certain element of love and passion involved the love for writing the passion for writing digging up news reporting going to matches speaking to coaches players reporters reporting from events uh, they are once in a lifetime opportunities for many so that is that is a huge kick for for reporters and journalists so that element is there but obviously at the end of the day you need money to survive as well that is also a fact so okay. you you somehow somehow you balance it and you move along so can someone make a pretty decent living by working as a journalist in the sports industry in the country today you, you 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 make a decent living but uh, you should get more that is what i should say. i should say yeah so zain when you say right now that ifl has come into the picture right a lot more money has come into the sport as well football but even let's say when you talking about an ipl as well right a lot of money has come in did that not really you know lead to increase in probably salaries for journalists no money in the sport doesn't move to money for journalists as well. no there's no okay. connection okay. money uh, salaries and money for journalists depends on the company you work okay. as simple as that okay. and the and the salary structure that company has hmm. as simple as that there's no connection with money in isl or ipl with journalists not directly if you are doing freelance work or side gigs that is different but yeah. as a full time professional that hmm. doesn't translate to to that Okay. Uh Sen again don't really want to put you in a spot here. Can you give me a ball park range? Let's say you a journalist with a 3 to 4 year experience, right? At a decent mid-level, you know, uh print media company, uh how much would uh, a journalist on in a month no, or a year? Print, print in print media it would be less, in digital media it would be a bit more. But the but that would be around 5-7000 max 10000 not more than that so it's not a huge difference that will change your life that won't happen that won't happen okay and what is but, the but 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 thing? but but the thing is but the thing is from my experience i can say if you if you work in the print industry hmm. you you get to know different sides of journalism and you learn a lot more than what you can do in, in a digital field print print has a charm because in print uh, what you writing it gets published as a matter of record say from 10 years from now you yeah. can always recall that story and say this was written in this edition of this newspaper and it right. is often permissible in court as well because because yeah. this all these corruption allegations hmm. uh, whatever uh, whatever proof you are supposed to submit people are mm. also submitting news links of mm. what is being written in the media in the mainstream oh, wow. media oh wow so so that is always there it's a matter of record in the digital field it's not the same because because credibility of the digital field is yet to match the credibility of the print side of things but yeah it, see both has its pros, pros and cons okay because digital and, uh, digital field is very fast it's it's very fast a uh, news broke and here it, it's already there on, on your phone yeah. you can read it in the yeah. print you have to wait for the uh, ed- edition on the next day of the morning to get that correct news. so that is there that thing is always there right and um, sign you also talked about sources being probably the most pivotal cog for any you know editor any news reporter right 
uh, I wouldn't want to go into the sources, but how does that entire thing work out, right? I was, I have always been curious, right? How does the channel of, how does the line of communication work? How do you even come across sources? See, this takes a lot of hard work and years of experience. And uh, you go to the field, you go to grounds, you get accustomed to players. Players know you by name, by the company you work for. And officials know you. And then you develop a rapport. You become friends with them. I know people who are lifelong friends. Friends for 30 years, 40 years. And they are no more sources. They are your friends, dear friends, yeah. family yeah. friends. So, yeah. so so, that is how you develop. There is no, there's no fixed rule, let's say. There's no fixed rule, let's say. You have to earn the trust of people and you have to be fair. Then people will trust you. You will think you're credible and they will give you information which is, I mean, which is important in the larger context of things. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Sam, just a final segment of things, just a final couple of minutes and we not, I don't want to keep you for much longer, right? Uh, now talking about, you know, you, you you must have had a chance to watch some of the bigger, the biggest or some of the best games of the country, right? Just want to dive into the footballing side of the things. Uh, can you tell as a journalist what has been the best game that you've watched? One for the country, if you've had the chance and uh, another club match or any other match that you think that, oh, wow, this is beautiful. Uh, the 5-3 match, Mohan Bagan versus East Bengal in 2009, okay. I-League was a, a pivotal match because of the number of goals were scored and it was the first time Mohan Bagan scored five goals against East Bengal. It is a huge thing in in Kolkata football. And uh, another match that readily comes to my mind is the match which the, the Mohan Bagan Bengal match again, which got postponed or forfeited because Mohan Bagan forfeited it at half time because a Mohan Bagan player was injured. And yeah. at half time, Monbagan were were trailing one nil. They had a player down, player down because he, uh, Oda for Okeli was red carded, and Monbagan yeah. didn't send their team back on the field in the second half. They forfeited that match. Monbagan got banned. Then that bad word ban was overturned, and a huge two or three crore fine was levied on Monbagan by the AIFF. Monbagan paid that. The all points of Mohan Bagan were deducted from the I-League. They had to save relegation in the last 10 or 12 matches that they were supposed to play. So that was a was a huge story. But because they, that had never happened before. A team not mm. in Indian football, a team not coming out to play in the second half, that had never happened before. And the entire uh, Salt Lake Stadium, the U of Arthi Stadium press box was, was stunned and surprised and uh, all reporters were calling up their sources frantically just to understand what is happening. So then the press conference happened after the match, and there was huge commotion and chaos at the uh, at the at the ground floor press conference at the Salt Lake Stadium in those days. So wow. that is a memorable memorable match for all the wrong reasons, but it's still a memorable yeah. match. And for yeah. for the national team, I would I think uh, uh, that. It's not the national team, but Messi played in India, played in Kolkata. Argentina played in yeah. Kolkata. 2012, versus, if I'm not wrong. 20, 2012, I believe, uh, versus yeah. Venezuela. The Argentina yeah. won that match 1 0. Messi played. Uh, Higuain was there. Mascherano yeah. was there. Gutierrez was there. So all top players were there. Uh, so that match is memorable I, because it was the only time that I got to see Messi live. I, so, so that is yeah. a memorable match. Uh, national team wise, uh, two three matches come to mind. India versus Malaysia in 2011. India won 3-1. JJ scored twice, and I think Sunil Chetri scored once, if I'm not mistaken. And the, the this uh, uh, AFC Asian Cup third round qualifier three matches in Kolkata. India defeated Afghanistan and yeah. qualified for the for the third round. Uh, third round, and then the under 17 men's World Cup matches in Delhi. Yeah. The so, one that Jackson so, scored as well. Jackson scored as well. Yeah, All right. Yeah, so those are memorable matches because these are important matches in Indian football's history. So yeah. and then and you get to get to meet players and see matches of teams that are at a higher level than you, and you understand yeah. what where India lacks and what India needs to do. 
so that is the thing even even the under 17 women's world cup tournament that was held last year mm-hmm. i yeah. i went to bhuvaneswar to cover one of brazil's match india brazil mm. yeah yeah so that match uh, seeing the brazilian players how good they were how technically sound they are so that is an experience that you always remember okay the best indian player that you seen right doesn't have to be the best in terms of numbers but just the most pleasing player that you the pleasing indian player that you seen uh, i am vijayan i am vijayan basudev mondol okay. superb player and superb. technically technically way ahead than others of during that time uh one unfulfilled potential probably you thought he is destined for greatness but probably for x y z reason didn't really make it many many uh, lalampuya alvin george okay okay lalampuya had a great start to his mohan bagan <laughs> career but yeah. couldn't couldn't quite capitalize on that alvin george another example very technically gifted but uh, but didn't quite make it very unfortunate for india even jj for instance jb scored jj has got matlab uh, goals for the indian team for yeah. for indian team for the club team as well but injuries prevented him from fulfilling his his true potential he retired very early he retired yeah. very early so that that is a sad part and and people talk about uh, sunil chetri's replacement but i think jj's replacement is not there which is why sunil chetri is also not quite Stunning. getting the support that he needs that yeah. he needs because okay, jj um, was jj was the was the was a was a was a very perfect foil for uh, sunil because jj was very technically he, good and very physically very strong he could hold up defenders someone that you can compare to is probably a pedro from that superstar barcelona team where wasn't given a lot of credit probably. but probably yeah. probably yeah, and yeah, jj's but... goal scoring record for the national team is very good it's phenomenal uh, yeah, yeah yeah it's 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 very good it's very good so that is a huge loss that is a huge loss uh in the current state do you see a replacement for uh, do you have anyone in mind as a replacement for sunil chetri see first they have to play in that position for for yeah, yeah, for, one, for one season or two season consistently in the club level and score goals then only you can earmark that player as a true replacement because otherwise you i can speak of david of of uh, mohammedan sporting he has he's been scoring goals but yeah. uh, we have to see what he does at the top flight at that national level we have to see that it's yeah. not easy to it's, it's not wise to name some player and that this lalbin vika player that he has scored 15 goals he has made, yeah, yeah, scored yeah. the, the most number of goals in i league yeah. yeah yeah but 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 we have to see that whether he can do it consistently transition into the yeah exactly that we have to see first he has to do it for one year one and a half years two years in the in the in the in the club level at the top level then only we can say that yeah this guy can be the ideal guy or an ideal foil otherwise it's too premature right now because we have we have named many players now right but hmm. no one has come to that Uh, level yeah. that we can say yeah this guy can replace this guy right that hasn't happened so it's not wise to say like that so fine last question and last question or last just opinion that i want to understand right for the last i think three or decades indian football has had one poster boy right whether it was i am vijayan then bhai chumbutia and then sunil chetri right do you think india will move out of that you know poster boy thing after sunil chetri or would it still be someone or would india then dive into good a lot of good players but no poster boy that much see, see as a as a, anyone who is uh, willing to play the sport you need role models hmm. for any for anywhere in the world you hmm. see you need role models that whom you base your game or you follow him or her hmm. or so that is always there that should remain and that is the way to go that usually happens but if there is no true icon as such hmm. then then you model your game on the on the on the international stars hmm. many indian players follow international stars they Correct. copy their moves they try to ape their their style of play so that is that that influence will always be there 
regarding mm. india it needs to be seen if someone truly emerges who can be the next superstar we have had superstars right from 1950s we have had superstars correct. right correct, from chuni goshwami to jarnal singh to uh, tulshidas balram to pk banerji in the 70s we had subhash bhomik subhato bhattacharya monoranjan bhattacharya sham thapa many names bhaskar ganguly yeah. many names in 90s we had im vijayan jopal ancheri uh, yeah. these players were star players then we had uh, bai chung sunil chhetri uh, then we had subhato pal the legend yeah. in his own right oh, correct uh, so so these players are always there but after that what happens we need to see we need to see and it, again i said it depends on the national team's performance if some if someone is really playing well for the national team he will give he will get that respect and and he he deserves that respect as simple as that perfect fan on a closing note any message for everyone who's watching the sport having been connected so closely to the sport to all the fans who's watching this after going through such a disappointment with the afc cup and the afghanistan pictures any last bit See, disappointments happen these things happen poor results happen but uh, i still feel people should at least follow the sport follow indian football because many youngsters and people i see they follow a lot of international football epl la liga but not quite indian football that shouldn't be the case see football is football at the end of the day there are difference in standards but still if you follow indian football also there is also good aspects of it it's not all bad so mm-hmm. that should be celebrated and followed and once you you follow it for for some time then you can get hooked to it correct then because see in in kolkata in goa in kerala in the northeast people from different generations are hooked to the sport right mm-hmm. they, they 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 don't need any second invitation invitation to follow football right so that is how it should be you should follow it and then then fall in love with it and then take it forward but you have to follow it otherwise what's the use what's the point correct perfect and uh, thank you so much you know it was just a lovely lovely conversation and i think i'm glad i probably moved away from the traditional people directly involved with the sport to someone who have a completely different perspective so it was very refreshing for me and again i have taken a lot of your time uh, got extended by some time but again thank you so much it was a lovely lovely conversation No, no. It was a pleasure talking to you because not every day that I I get an opportunity to speak, right? Yeah. I usually write, but it's Correct. not an opportunity that I get every day. So it was nice to speak on Indian football. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you so much, and I'll just end the recording. And uh, yeah, thank you so. Much.